Hello, my name is Justin Kramer. This is the first video in a series that's going to uh, teach you how to create a model of the skull from a head CT using free software. Now, if you've stumbled onto this video through YouTube, um, you should realize it is part of a larger tutorial. It's all held together by this website, which is at neurorad.link slash skull. So this walks you through all the different steps of the tutorial, linking to all the different videos. Um, we use Slicer and Mesh Mixer as the software to create the model that we want to end up with here, which is kind of a standard anatomical skull model where the skull top pops off. So first step is to make sure you have those two pieces of software installed on your computer. And once you do and you're ready to go, the next thing to be aware of is that all the files for this tutorial are shared through Google Drive at the following location, neurorad.link slash skull files. So if you go to that location, you'll see that there are multiple folders that are named according to the steps of the tutorial. So for each step, the contents of that folder represent the completed tutorial. So Step one is to segment the CT in Slicer. If you look at the files in that, you'll have a fully segmented CT. That allows you to catch up, and if you run into any snags, get an accurate version of the file, and maybe see how it was done. It also allows me to take some shortcuts in the videos to kind of slow things, or speed things up a little bit. But the first step it, we are going to segment the CT using Slicer. And the first thing is to get our CT, and that's the headct.nii file. So I'm going to download that. It's about 85 megabytes, so it takes just a second. And once that's finished downloading, we're going to open up Slicer. Now I'm using Windows. Slicer and Mesh Mixer both work in both Windows and Mac. So either one is okay. So you're going to go to Load Data and you're going to choose the file to add and browse to the directory you downloaded it to. Click on Head CT NII, click Open, and then click OK. And you see that the Head CT opens up. Now, Slicer by default uh, gives you this kind of view where you have three different windows and then this is for viewing the 3D models. A um, couple controls in Slicer, in Slicer that are important to be aware of. This is a, a big one here. This is controls how you're displaying your data. Now say you only want the axial slice. You can say red slice only. Okay, Or if you want to go back to where we were, you click 4 up and that gets you back to where we were. So let's just look at the axial slice for now. A couple other controls. If you left click and drag, that lets you window and level your image so you can make it look a little bit better. And then right clicking and dragging allows you to zoom. That's pretty helpful for segmentation sometimes if you're trying to get tiny details. All right, so now we're ready to segment. Now just a word about segmentation. Segmenting is basically coloring. You're specifying the structure that you're interested in, and you have to do that slice by slice. The segmentation module, uh, well, another thing to note is that everything in Slicer is organized through modules. That's anything that does something in Slicer is called a module. Um, the segmentation module is called the editor. And for any given module in Slicer, there are numerous ways to access it. So the editor module you can get to from a button here. There's also this menu here that has a surprising amount of content. So these are commonly used modules. The editor is one of those. Then they group them by tasks. So under segmentation you have the editor. And then they just have a list of all the modules. So the editor is also accessible there. So we can just access it with the big button. Click OK. All right, so let's take a second to just look at all the options available through the segmentation module. So here it lists the master volume, which is your CT, 
and that was the name of the file was head underscore ct. It by default creates a merge volume called the head ct dash label. We want to create a skull structure. So I'm going to click add structure. Now you have to pick from some default names. So if we type in skull, we see that's available and now we have a skull label. So as you're coloring or segmenting, each structure that you're interested in, the color for that is called a label in Slicer. Down here you have a bunch of buttons and that represents all the different functions you can do to segment your volume. And we'll go through quite a few of those just trying to get the skull segmented. And then lastly, I want to draw your attention to the data probe down here. Now, it's not displaying anything right now, but watch what happens to it as I drag my mouse over the study. So, you start to see values popping up. Now, the unit of value, or the unit that, de uh, that determines the color of something on a CT is called Hounsfield units, and that's determined by the attenuation or density of that structure. So bone is really dense. You can see that the values are ranging in the thousands on average, 1430 right now. If I go over to air, you can see the number ne negative 930 displaying because air is really not dense. And then we'll talk about a couple other values that show up in the data probe once we start segmenting. But time to start segmenting. So the first step is typically what is called thresholding. Now thresholding just basically says mark all of the pixels that fall between a range of values. So if we click the threshold effect button and then scroll down you can see there's a threshold range here. So if you scroll down, you can see that it has automatically selected quite a bit of the bony structures, but one of the things you'll appreciate is that the central marrow is actually not very dense and it's not selected, and it's not even selecting parts of the outer cortex that you can see here. So I'm going to bump the threshold down. And you can see that as we decrease the threshold values, more of the bone gets selected. So I'm just going to go until it seems like it has selected quite a bit. Now if I keep going down, you can see that it starts picking up noise and we don't want that so I'm gonna go back to where it wasn't picking up much noise but it was still getting most of the bone it seems like a good happy medium um, the clivus here still isn't very dense so if we wanted a perfect model we'd have to manually fill in some gaps there but that's not exactly what we're going for here so We'll call that good. Now, the last thing is you have to actually apply this threshold. So you click the Apply button, and now that label sticks around. So I talked about the data probe earlier. If you hover over your segmentation here, look at the data probe, and you'll see it says Skull with 140. And uh, basically that means that the value of your label is 140. And that's important to pay attention to when it comes time to uh, segment multiple structures and try to save different files so it, it's good to be aware of that from the beginning. So as we scroll through we'll notice that the skull isn't the only thing that got segmented. There's a head frame here that got segmented, there's a little bit of noise that got included including some cori plexus calcifications so we want to take out things that aren't connected to the bulk of our segmentation and there is a tool that allows us to do that and it's called the identify islands effect and it does just that it identifies different areas that are connected so you gotta click apply and you can see that there are a bunch of different colors but we know that we're mainly interested in the skull so we want to keep that island so the save island effect if you click that button and then click anywhere in the segmentation that you're interested in. You can see that a lot of other stuff went away. That head frame is no longer segmented. The choroid plexus is no longer segmented. So thresholding and identifying islands gets you 80% of the way pretty easily. But if we switch back to the 4-up view and kind of look at our
Oops. I actually clicked Save Island. So there is an undo function. It's good to know about. I'm just going to go to the Select Default Tool. That way I'm not going to screw up anything. So here we are with, uh, with our skull segmented. But you can see there's still some things that we may not want in our model. Like we may not want the mandible included. We may not want the styloid processes. Um, C1 is still part of it. Uh, C2 got excluded. So I'm going to show you how to manually trim away those structures. So we'll, we'll do that with the mandibular condyles and then I'll stop and the files that are available on Google Drive will actually have C2 and the styloid processes removed also. But it's just, it's the same process. So, you can see here there's a paint effect. Okay, now if you click the paint effect and then also click the erase label, that allows you to remove things. You can see here it's, it's a pretty big circle that I'll be working with, so I actually want to bump it down so I have a little bit more control. And now you can see that if I click anywhere on a segmentation, it removes that part of the segmentation. And basically what I'm trying to do is disconnect the mandibular condyle from the rest of my segmentation. Now you can see these areas I'm clicking, it's not it doesn't appear to be connected to the rest of the model, and it's probably not. Um, it's probably only connected at a point or two. But the thing you have to realize is that you're actually working in multiple planes, so sometimes if it doesn't appear to be connected in the coronal plane, it actually is in the axial plane. So I've found that over disconnecting a little bit up front tends to save you some time but it's not uncommon that you're scrolling back and forth trying to find that connection between two different structures that you're trying to disconnect and it, it can be kind of a kind of a pain and as you can tell segmentation is one of the more time-consuming processes for 3d printing especially if you're trying to make a bunch of different structures the fortunate thing is that it's not very difficult, so you can do it and not really have to be that focused. All right, so we have the right mandibular condyle disconnected. Let's go ahead and disconnect the left also. That's disconnected. I'm going to start there. should just take a minute. Once we have the structure we don't want disconnected, then we just do another identify islands effect <coughs> to remove it. slices. All right, so it should be disconnected. Let's go ahead and identify islands again. Again, you have to click apply. I always forget to do that. And you can see here that the mandibles are different colors than the rest of the skull, so it worked. Now we want to save our skull island, and the mandibles disappeared. So the last thing I want to have you notice is that the intention was we are labeling the skull with the color 140. Now if you hover over here, clearly that's not the same color, and it's actually the tissue 1 label. I I'm not sure why the labels get reassigned so easily, but I want to, just for the sake of consistency, and when you start generating models and saving things, it's best to have those labels match up. So I'm going to change this green to a yellow. And I'm going to do that with the change label effect. So this button here, if you click it, change label, the input color is 1, and the output color is 140. 
I'm going to apply that. And you can see we're back to the skull being actually a skull 140 if you look down at the data probe. So now we want to save our progress. And anytime you're working with 3D files, it's, it's just a good idea to save your progress. Slicer is a pretty stable program, but the last thing you want to do is spend 30 minutes segmenting something and crash with, without anything saved. So let's just go ahead and work in the downloads directory. So you change directory for all files. I'm going to go to my downloads directory, choose that. And, and this is the Slicer save interface. Pretty much everything you create in Slicer is a separate file. So our skull label is a separate file. The CT label is a separate file. Uh, the initial volume. And then finally, there's an MRML file. And that's basically, that's a Slicer file. So you can double click on that. And it will open up where you were in Slicer. That works in Windows. It doesn't seem to in Mac. In Mac, if you open up Slicer and then go to File, Open, and open up the MRML file, it'll still work, though. So let's save all of these. And now if you go to the Downloads file folder, you can see there's an MRML file and some other files. These all need to be in the same directory. But you can actually copy and paste all these files into different directories as well. You just have to keep them together. So that's everything. The finished files on Google Drive will also have C1, C2, and the styloid processes removed, but will be pretty similar to this. So if you want to finish up disconnecting the styloid processes, and uh, I don't want to make any assumptions here, that's the bony structure that comes out and comes down a little ways from the skull base on both sides. So I remove that and then C1 is here and that's best removed in the coronal plane so disconnecting from the occipital condyles so you erase this part of it slice by slice and then remove that so that is it